hello again and uh, and welcome. This is this uh, this trip today was uh, was from Mexico City where I spent uh, four or five days, um, mainly because I, I got my bike serviced in Mexico City, um, and I would suggest that whenever you, whenever you're um, you're travelling. Uh, and you've got a long trip to do. You should map out some of the places where you probably want to get a, a um, where you probably want to get a service. And and if you if you've got a decent bike, um, really the only choice you have is um, are the major cities, and you, you you'll usually get a pretty good service department. If you've got a modern bike, you you have to. You don't have any choice. Um, you, you can't, you won't find anyone who can service your bike anywhere except for the major cities. Um, mainly, mainly because, I mean, there's no market for it. Um, if you've got a KGM and a, or, or a BMW, BMW in certain countries are a lot more popular. A KGM were fairly popular in Colombia, um, New Mexico. Uh, some of the more advanced countries because they're, they are a, more, a bit more expensive and there's not as many of, of them. Uh, so for the smaller countries, there's no, sometimes there's no um, KTM service. Like in Colombia, there's a really good KTM service place in Medium but I only stayed there for a couple of nights so I didn't get a service there. I made the mistake of getting it done in Cartagena where there was an authorised dealer for KTM but they really screwed things up. I mean they had my bike for seven days to do a basic service and I had to return it once and then even then they screwed it up. I had a slow leak in one of my, they didn't, I put new tyres on, they didn't seal it properly and so I had a slow leak in my front tyre which I couldn't fix um, and then they also didn't put my seal on my, my coolant. So um, it's something I would never have known because with, with the KTM it's a bit of a design for maybe an afterthought, but getting to the coolant basically means you've got to take all the guards off. Got, I've got to take the bars off, I've got to take the guards off, um, uh, the, the, uh, the panels off to get to the coolant, which is really painful. I mean, coolant's only supposed to be changed once every nine, six to usually 12 months. Uh, they, they suggest 12 months, it's quite beautiful here in the morning here, you know, going up, getting up towards the mountains. Mexico City is already uh, uh, one of the second highest elevated city in the world, but um, you just keep going up, and it's a, it was a really cool ride. But yeah, so getting your bike serviced is um, is something that you uh, that you really, if you've got a modern bike, you you can only go to the major cities: um, BMW, KTM, uh, Kawasaki. Um, you know, they, they've all got in all those major cities. They've got. Uh, They've got service departments. You've got to remember that most of the bikes sold in Central and South America are the Indian or Chinese bikes um, because they're a lot cheaper, obviously. Um, but I found that the, the best KTM service places were um, uh, one, there was one really good one in Panama, um, there was one in um, Mexico, uh, in Medellin. Uh, there probably was one in, in um, uh, Bogota as well, but Medellin and um, and then Santiago and Chile had a really nice one. Um, there would be nothing in, in La Paz, uh, but BMWs are pretty well serviced. I mean, if I if I if I saw a hundred uh, adventure riders throughout um, throughout my trip, maybe a couple of hundred total, um, I would say. 90% of them are on from overseas, adventure riders from overseas, not within the country. 90% um, of them are on BMWs, maybe 80 80%. 80, 80%. Uh, I, I saw a couple of guys on KTMs, but they were just riding around their own country. Um, so, yeah, and yeah, there's plenty of guys on really old bikes and they picked up pretty cheap, and you know, they, those sort of guys had a lot more trouble uh, than what I had. Uh, for the guys that I kept in touch with, with their bikes, and that was mainly because once you get, once you start doing some real adventure riding and getting off the road, off the main roads and getting onto the dirt, you, uh, you know, some of it's very corrugated, so it's bumpy, and and um, you'll find that uh, if if you've got any bolts that may be a little bit loose, uh, they're going, 
they're going to get a lot more loose <laughs> and probably come off. I even had one come off on uh, on one of my um, my side cases, the, the slip in uh, where where it slips in to click in. Uh, one of them came loose there, and I had to zip tie that until I got to a place where I could find a, a bolt that was suitable. Um, so we all had the same issues, but you know, most of the people that had the older bikes had issues with their radiators. Um, uh, and one of the guys uh, um, accidentally over tightened on his engine block and cracked his engine block, which is not something you want to do. There's an extra seven days of waiting around for a spare. Um, but uh, yeah, so um, got my KTM service. The guys in Mexico City at KTM in Mexico City were fantastic, uh, really enthusiastic bunch of guys. They let me leave all my gear, you know, the, so I didn't have to take it to the hotel, um, like my side cases with all my camping gear. So I just left all all the stuff that I wasn't going to use in Mexico City, uh, left it with them, and they you know got a nice big modern secure premises, and uh, then. You know, after a couple of days, we picked it up and it was you know, running, running beautifully. You know, it was running well beforehand, but it was just due for a service. I'd done over 10,000 kilometres, so uh, it was due for a service. I think I, I was done. I would pretty much bang on uh, 10, around 10,000 kilometres by that stage. Um, yeah, so the the ride today was, um, yeah, went up to about 10,000 feet, and then back down to Veracruz, which was uh, sea level, obviously, um, uh, but. It was a really interesting ride, and uh, once I got up into the mountains, I had uh, I had a few little issues here and there just with uh, sight because some of the mountains they it was obviously a thing that it happened, happens there a lot, but it was just covered in fog, and uh, and visibility was really really low. So I basically sat behind a, a truck uh, only because it had a lot of lights on the back of it. And I thought, well, if anyone's going to come up my backside because I was going pretty slow, uh, they would see the truck as well. So. I sat behind the truck, uh, the truck most of that that way. It was only about 10 to 15 minutes, but it was visibility down to maybe 20 feet. It was really, 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 really bad. But it was really high up in the mountains. It would have been beautiful if there was no fog, because you could see right down in little patches. You could see right down below, because it was quite sunny, as you can see. Uh, it just, um, yeah, just at that place. Yeah, but I, I went through. Um, lots of different uh, climates you know so you, you basically right now it's probably about 20 degrees because you're still up pretty high uh, that went up to you know 20 degrees which is about 75 70 75 and then right up into the mountains it got really quite cool and down to um, and down to a uh, so there's there's some of the fog as I was entering it but it just got worse and worse um, and uh, yeah then you know, down to, down to like you know, maybe 10 degrees, which is about 50. Um, but it was still still pretty comfortable. I mean, I get with my climb uh, riding pants and gear, my Overlander pants and gear. I'm pretty I'm pretty fine most of the way. I I get I mean I sweat ridiculously compared to most people, and um, so I was um, getting <laughs> I did get uh, when you whenever you get into the city and you've got to stop, which you do in a lot of these countries where the freeways. And the highways actually go through the cities, um, but this was my uh, second last, last day of riding. In uh, I, I went to Veracruz and then I get to Shetamul. After that, I think I went to Shetamul. I might have gone somewhere else before that. I'm not sure yet. But I only had a couple of days riding left in Mexico before I, I entered Belize, um, which wasn't a, you know unless I was going to do diving because they've got some pretty good diving there. Um, I wasn't going to stay there very long anyway because it wasn't a, a country that I particularly thought was going to be interesting. Uh, it turned out to be exactly as I thought. Uh, but apparently, the, in in, uh, in Belize, if you want to go diving, there's some amazing diving and beautiful islands and reefs and stuff like that. So, yeah, um, I had another lot of you know going. This is bypassing one of the major cities there, and I had a lot of. Um, I had a lot of uh, time on my hands because I wanted to get to Veracruz early afternoon, but I only had about four hours of actual riding, so I, I took my time and stopped off in a few of the smaller towns. I don't like stopping in the large towns. There's really, there's, sometimes they've got some pretty cool you know, uh, architecture and stuff like that, but the small towns is where it's at. You know, that's where all the good stuff is. Great food and 
really friendly people and plus they probably don't see a lot of adventure riders so you're always pretty popular when you go into the into the smaller towns um, but uh, yeah I, I uh, uh, the, the plan was to get to Veracruz spend a the night there get there early have a look around because Veracruz it's a really old port city um, but it's also becoming quite a tourist destination now too and they've got a lovely Malacom which is like a promenade um, where they've got yeah, lots of food, uh, food places and that. You know, I tend to, when I go to those and they've got like you know, 40, 50 different choices of food, I try to get a little, little bit of it, a little bit in each one. And, you know, uh, but I, as I said in previous videos, I'm pretty hooked on, um, I'm pretty hooked on the old uh, tacos now. <laughs> I, I just couldn't get enough of them. And, uh, unfortunately, some of the other countries aren't, aren't as big on tacos, so you've got to vary your diet as you go. But you know, again, riding each day, your 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 budget's you know pretty much, you know, on it, on a trip like this, your but most of your money is spent on accommodation. You know, um, it all depends where you stay. If you want to stay in a hostel, you're looking at around fifteen twenty dollars for a dorm room. You know, maybe ten dollars some in some places for a dorm. Uh, I never stayed in the dorms. If I stayed in a hostel, I got a private one. I always look for hostels that have private rooms. Because I, I just can't risk my gear getting taken. And even though that doesn't stop stop the gear, that's a freaking horrible photo of me. Um, but uh, even though it doesn't stop you uh, getting uh, getting ripped off, if someone wants to break in, they're going to break in and get your stuff. But it just adds that extra layer of protection. Most dorms have little lockers to put them in, but that's not. I'd need about seven lockers, eight lockers to put my gear in so I usually stayed in the privates and the privates range from say 20 to you know, 40 dollars for a night um, so they're pretty good value the, the those sort of things um, uh, the and then hotels you know sometimes you know, after a, a, a few days of roughing it you know four or five days of roughing it you want to stay somewhere nice especially if you're going to stay for two or three days in the city and I, I, that's when I used to stay in uh, some decent hotels and they can range. I, I budgeted about $100 for a night for those, but some of them were a bit more expensive and um, you, know, you just gotta, you, you, you just gotta do your research. And, and that's what I usually did when I got into a town that night, when I got home, I, I got all my stuff recharged. I, that was the first thing I always do. I just set up my recharging station, get everything recharged, then I transfer all the videos into a folder uh, for each day's ride. Um, and the photos, so everything's taken off the cameras, and I, then I clear the case of the cameras and set it back to zero. And then I, um, uh, so I've got you know memory cards are clean and erased, um, and uh, then I basically get out and about, have a look around, and then when I get back later at night, I'm well, you know like during the time I'm, I'm working as well, so I'm answering emails and that. But late at night, if I've got some time on my hand, I start researching what hotels are or whether hostels and. The hostel I stayed in Shedemore, I stayed there for three nights, I think, or four nights. And uh, it was fantastic. It was beautiful. A little swimming pool. Just jump in and, you know, it was right in the city. So it's only like 30 steps from the main strip, the main uh, the main drag. Um, yeah, so as you can see, the weather, weather was, uh, you know, you go through quite a few different, when you get up in the mountains, the weather hangs around and always worried about getting a little bit wet. but. Basically, once I got down back into Veracruz, it was all beautiful and sunny, you know, so it was, it was pretty cool. But my daily budget, you, you're looking at fuel, you know, depending on how long you're riding, but usually I'll fill the tank. Uh, I try to time my tank fill so I'm getting, when I get into the city, I either fill it up or I'm pretty full as I get into the city, the final destination, so I've got a full tank when I'm riding out. It doesn't always work out. Um, the, the thing about when you're riding, and especially you've got to get into a habit of filling up when you're half full. Um, and it's even though it's not necessary in, you know, in some countries like Mexico you know, once you get further south it is necessary to get in that habit never thinking oh well I can just keep waiting until the next city the next city the next city because you are going to run out of fuel um, if you don't if you don't get into a really into really good habits um, so yeah uh, you know running out of fuel for me I, I think it may it happened once and I was about two, or th two to four miles from the city. Have a look up here on the right hand side, you can see a trailer up on the cliff side. So they're shoring up the, the cliffs here and they just use a normal trailer that you put on the back of a car 
and then they hoist it up and they work from there. It's crazy. Uh, as I said in the thing, is occupational health and safety is not a big concern in Mexico. Jobs are and getting an income. Um, so yeah, the, the final part of the ride was pretty cool because I went. Uh, you basically go up into the mountains and fantastic views as you can see here. There's some beautiful mountain ranges. I'm already up pretty high anyway. Um, and then you come right down into Veracruz and it's all, you know, it's pretty pretty level around there. Um, you are, th during your time, you will spend a lot of your time overtaking trucks because um, there are a lot of trucks on the road all throughout Central and South America as well um, because that's, you know, they, they, they don't have, most of the countries don't have like a freight rail, uh, rail link so it's trucks, trucks, trucks. So you spend more time more time seeing trucks on a lot of the time than you do actual uh, actual cars. Um, but I always I always suggest if you're going to do some long riding, um, is that you if, if you've got a big day ahead of you, always I leave at sunrise all the time. Uh, it's the best time to leave um, and getting out and about early. And you know if you've got like a six hour of riding, which is usually what I I don't like to do much more than that. I I did do more than that but I didn't like to do much more than that but the six hours if it was a 600 kilometre trip 400 miles or so um, yeah, 350 miles then you, 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 it's going to take you You basically for every 100 kilometres uh, 65 miles you want to add just add 20 minutes to each one just for, for, your, for all your different stops along the way it's just it's just worthwhile it, 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 it's a lot better to do it that way than um, than rushing anywhere, and usually you got some nice places. I always used to, I always stop in gas stations if I want to get some food and or get some, and if I'm like just a little snacks along the way. But then I never stop there for resting. I just move on again and then find a nice spot to uh, sit down or relax. Um, on a, on a motorbike, I, I I always found that lying down was better. So if I could find a park in a little town where they had a bench, I could lay down and just stretch myself out. Because you are sitting on the bike for a long time, your ass gets pretty sore. Um, so I always suggest that that would be the, the best way to do it. Some other riders always talk about, oh, you just use your stops in gas stations. I mean, I don't know what the point of going on a long, not beautiful ride is if you if that's all you if that's the the the, the scenery you're going to set surround yourself in is pretty pathetic. Um, but some people like doing that, and each to their own. Um, but uh, yeah, so. Um, I spent I spent one night in Veracruz. Even though it looks like it's pretty c cool here, it's quite it was actually quite warm. Um, but when you're riding, again, when you when you're riding and you've got the air coming through you, even something like 90, 95, it's not not too bad. It's comfortable because you've got that air pushing through you. Um, unfortunately, um, the, my vi my helmet, which is a Shubeth E100, which is a fantastic helmet, and there's not a lot of noise inside it. But uh, I've got to say that the, the lid flips up, uh, flips down anything over about 90 k's an hour. It just comes down and just flips down your face. And sometimes you just want to lift that up, put your sunnies on and just cruise along that way. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, uh, for some reason it doesn't. As, as the teeth wear out on it, it gets worse and worse, you know, 60, 50 k's. So I ended up going through two or three visors on the trip. So yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, as, as always guys, questions and comments below, there's the mail on there. So I'll check to you soon. Bye.